Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Cold Case Christmas. This case is only two years old. It's actually two years old to the day as I record this. It's about a young man who disappeared on the night of December 13th, 2020. You'll only see this tomorrow the 14th, but today as I record this, it's a two year marker of him being missing. So, this is the case of Jason Landry. Let's get into his story. 21 year old Jason Landry went missing on December 13th, 2020, while heading home to spend the holidays with his parents in Missouri City, Texas. He was at Texas State University at San Marcos and the whole family was very much looking forward to getting together. Jason's parents would have had all their adult children there for Christmas, but Jason never made it to his parents' home. And Jason's disappearance has baffled investigators for two years. His wrecked car was found abandoned on Salt Flat Road near Lulling in Caldwell County early the next morning. His backpack, clothing and other personal items were found nearby, but there was no sign of Jason. A state trooper made the call to Jason's parents to say that they'd found the wrecked vehicle. And this state trooper is quoted as saying, we're working on trying to locate him and I fear that he may be on some type of substance. Reason being is because I found some narcotics in his backpack. So was Jason under the influence of narcotics when he crashed? We don't know because he's never been found, but it's a good theory to start from for law enforcement. The dispatch call from that officer that found the car has been recorded and I'm gonna read you a portion of the transcript from that. I've just come upon a vehicle that's in a ditch and it appeared to have hit a fence. The dispatcher says, did you find the driver? The searcher says, I went up and down Salt Flat. Body camera video shows when state troopers arrived about an hour later. The trooper said, yeah, I can see where he went sideways. Left the keys in there and it's all locked up. He'd locked the car, but left the keys. Some of his underwear got blood on it, but I didn't see anyone. Probably some college kid, the trooper said to the firefighter. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, responded the firefighter. The officer found a backpack belonging to Jason up the road from the wrecked car. Inside was a wallet containing a driver's license of Jason Landry. So they had an ID there. As Landry's car was getting towed, his father was on his way to Lulling from Houston. The videos that Kent Landry took as the sun was rising are included in the files released by the Caldwell County Sheriff's Office. These are his flip-flops and this is his t-shirt Kent described on the video that he took with his phone. Kent said, it seems to me that they're saying, well, this is just a stupid college kid who does stupid college kid stuff like smoke marijuana. So what? He doesn't need to be found. We don't need to work hard to find him. Kent said, it just feels like your child is discarded because they treat everything with this investigation with such indifference. He said, you don't even secure the evidence, whatever that might be. Despite Kent's disgruntlement with the initial search effort, they have searched extensively around that crash vehicle, which was very, very rural. They used dog teams, they got boots on the ground, they got people on horseback, ATVs, they used a plane, a helicopter, drones, and nothing. Searches drain a pond nearby and part of a river. There had been some flooding in the area, so one additional theory was that he'd been washed away in this flood water. But once that flood water dries, then it should give up its secret. I don't know, I don't know what to think. Did Jason walk away? And he walked miles and further than the search radius went. In October of 2021, volunteers with Texas Search and Rescue used artificial intelligence to, to create computer mapping programs to show them based on thousands of photographs of the area where Jason could be. And even this advanced technology did not locate Jason. 
There's been lots of false alarms, conspiracy theories, theories that are wild and outlandish, they're not worth the time, but any viable theory, then it is worth investigating, but Jason is still missing. His parents said they don't believe he's alive, but they are still determined to find out what happened that night. And uh, this was a statement from them. We have been preparing our hearts for the worst for a long time. We're not going to give up praying. We're not going to give up hoping until we know the truth and our child comes home. He was 21, he was a young man, he was very independent, but he was still their child. The Caldwell Sheriff's Office said investigators have gained access to most of Jason's phone data and that from his computer. And that has given them a minute by minute timeline, looking at GPS data, etc. It took a while because they've got to wait for warrants from social media and tech companies to be returned, but that information, it was vital. So this is a minute by minute timeline that investigators put together of Jason Landry's last moments before the crash. They believe he left his apartment in San Marcos at 10.55 p.m. on December 13th, 2020. At 11.05 p.m., he drove down Highway 80 and passed under I-35 in San Marcos. He continued driving, entering Caldwell County at 11.07 p.m. By 11.11 p.m., Landry was in Martindale, Texas, continuing south on Highway 80. At 11.15 p.m., Landry passed over SH-30 and Highway 80. At 11.17 p.m., he was in Fentress, and then he entered Prairie Lee at 11.19 p.m. He then entered the city of Lulling on Highway 80 at 11.24 p.m. As he went through the intersection of Hackberry Street, where Highway 80 becomes Austin Street, he stopped using the Waze app and began using the Snapchat app on his cell phone. He continued on Austin Street to the intersection with US Highway, which is Magnolia Avenue. It's believed he continued straight through that intersection but it's at this place, this intersection, where Landry's digital footprint stops. Authorities believe that Landry continued onto Spruce Street, which turns into Salt Flat Road, and his car, his Ultima, was found abandoned there in the 2300 block of Salt Flat Road, about 30 minutes after midnight on December 14th, 2020. So two years today, as you're listening to this, if you view this video on the day that it's put out, obviously. There's a 67 minute window that investigators have tried to take through piece by piece between the last digital footprint at Austin and Magnolia and the discovery of the crash scene. His phone had signal and was powered on, but investigators have tried to determine why it doesn't appear to have been used since the area of Magnolia Avenue and Austin Street. Maybe he just finished what he was doing. The evidence that Caldwell County Sheriff's Office released includes videos, messages and Snapchats that Jason shared with his friends the night he disappeared. So he must have been doing this while he was driving, maybe not paying attention. There were images and talk of marijuana, as well as some personal dialogue. A retired FBI agent who runs a non-profit called Project Absentis looked closely at the case with his team of investigators. Abel Pina, who's been investigating crimes for 27 years, said there are multiple red flags and they believe Jason's clothes and other belongings in the middle of the road could have been staged. I think the biggest red flags for us initially were the clothes just being laid where they were placed. The more we ran it by some of our team, we all agreed that it appeared to look like it was staged. He said that witnesses also raised doubts about whether Jason was actually behind the wheel of the vehicle when it crashed. You know, he was Snapchatting, he was on his phone. So was he doing that while he was driving or was someone else driving? Did someone else crash Jason's car and get out and run away? Were they scared? Was Jason injured and tried to follow? But why hasn't he been found? Pina said this area is just busy. There's drug activity that takes place behind here and we have discovered this criminal element in this area. Instead of turning right on Magnolia to get to I-10, 
Jason's vehicle travelled four miles before it turned into Salt Flat Road, which was a pitch dark gravel dirt road. Why was Jason there? Why wasn't he carrying on on the highway to get to his parents' house? He travelled four miles out of his way. Pina believes that the Caldwell County Sheriff's Office may have rushed to judgment by assuming Jason was high and having an internal crisis. So high on drugs, depressed, crashed, and then was so out of his mind that somehow he took his clothes off and he wandered naked into the, into the woods. Would you do that if you were high on narcotics or marijuana? I don't know. Pina said, I don't believe he was high enough that he would have gone into any kind of episode where he would have removed his clothes, especially in the conditions. It was cold that night. It was December. It was freezing temperatures. Pina said critical evidence inside Jason's vehicle, including DNA, hair and fibres, could have been missed because the troopers that towed it that night didn't secure that crime scene. The sheriffs didn't take custody of that vehicle until five days later. Pina says, I believe there were some missteps at the beginning. They probably should have preserved the area there and left the vehicle there and brought in some professionals to process the exterior entry of the vehicle for prints. Caldwell County Sheriff's Captain Jeff Ferry is the lead investigator of the case, as I said before. And he agreed, he admitted, there are things as a criminal investigator, I wish I'd done differently 100%. I would almost guarantee that with hindsight, that officer, that trooper, would likely not do the same thing again. Was it a crime? Was someone else driving? Why was Jason naked? Or was he on his own and was having this crisis that the officers believed at first and went down that route and ignored the possibility that a crime had been committed? Whichever it is, whichever is the truth, where is Jason Landry? What happened to him? Did he walk off with, naked in the freezing cold and succumb to the elements? But why hasn't it been found given all of the technology and the hours of boots on the ground, horses, ATVs, planes, helicopters, drones? Have they all just missed him? Was he kind of washed away in a flood? Was the flood that bad? Could he have drowned? And there's been wildlife activity and that's why they've not found him, that his bones have been dispersed. We just don't know. For the last two years, his parents have lived in this state of not knowing. And they deserve some answers. So, were you in the area? If you know anything about Jason, his whereabouts, if you drove by and you remember anything, call 911 or the Coldwell County Sheriff's Office at 512 three nine eight six triple seven or email detective jeff ferry at jeff dot ferry at co dot coldwell dot tx dot us they're particularly asking anybody with uh, trail cameras on private property surveillance video police in the initial investigation might have missed would there still be footage on those after all this time i don't know I don't think so, but who knows? It's worth checking, isn't it? And if you do find something, then please do contact the Sheriff's Office. All right, guys, what do you think happened to Jason Landry? This is a real mystery, but Jason needs to come home. So I'll say goodbye for now, and I'll see you in the next episode of Cold Case Christmas. Bye, guys. Come on, Tilly. Thanks, sir.